regards and opinions concerning life in Taiwan, the region, and the world. I'm your host, James Thomas, coming to you from Taipei, Taiwan, and I'm so glad to have you traveling along with me on this journey, and welcome to the show. This episode, I have a very special guest, and we're going to talk about some heavy things today. And um, you are going to want to hold your seats on this one. I'm talking to Mr. Vincent Tung. He is the host of the YouTube channel, The Wondering Warrior. And um, I'm going to let him talk a little bit more about himself and uh, about his channel. And uh, we're going to get into some very interesting stuff here. How you doing, Vincent? How you doing, dude? I'm doing good. Thank you. Thank you for having me on, James. That's uh, right. Again, Vincent Tung, The Wandering Warrior. And to sum it up in a nutshell, I train martial arts. I try to go on adventures and through all those uh, trials, tribulations and perspectives, tell stories. And I hope that these stories can give people a perspective that they can't get at home. Yeah. Uh, and I think that this is something that the world needs. And we're in, a, we're in a time and place that we can provide that. COVID is kind of dampening the plans a little bit, but uh, we'll look at <laughs> Yeah. Oh, and I should tell everybody that you're coming to us from uh, Pingdong, Taiwan. That's way down in the beautiful, southern, hot, humid section of Taiwan. Yeah. Hey, yo, before yeah, we jump to this, land. tell everybody where you're from. Oh, yeah. So I'm, I'm actually, my people aren't from Pingdong itself, but my parents are Taiwanese. Uh, my father is from Jiayi. My mother was born in Miaoli, but they moved to Taipei early on. And they both immigrated to the U.S. as, as young people working. And they uh, they met, fell in love, and I was born. And that would be in Massachusetts, Lowell, Massachusetts. Uh, spent some time between Lowell and the surrounding suburbs. Uh, went to school at UMass Amherst in Massachusetts and uh, later moved to Boston. Yeah. What do you study? What do you study? In, in, oh, what, in, what, that? what do you study? What oh, do you study? Yeah, Amherst, I studied uh, wildlife conservation. Wildlife, yeah. wildlife conservation, and, and 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 you know you 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 search you go you searching around for different styles of martial arts and all that stuff. How did that get mixed up with conservation, dude? I would say I would say I have uh, I have two, maybe I I, may, I might have three innate interests. Um, I like understanding the world around me. I don't like being ignorant about things. Uh, a lot of my whole interest in history, just as a, as a topic, sociology, all that kind of stuff, started when I asked my mom, uh, we live in Massachusetts, right? And she's like, yeah. Uh, what happened to the Massachusetts people? <laughs> like, what do you mean? Like, aren't there you know, Native Americans or something? And she's like, oh, I don't know. Obviously, I'm like, well, I'm not satisfied with that answer because she doesn't she doesn't really know the whole history. behind. She doesn't know, you know, it was colonization, but she doesn't really understand why there aren't many today compared to, say, you go to Mexico and there's a lot of indigenous people. What's going on? Right. Hmm. So she didn't know. I didn't know. And that that got me thinking, oh, I really don't know anything about where I live. Um, and that, that started that. And uh, me, I've always been interested in in nature, uh, I think. Uh, the interaction between humans and nature, uh, the fact sometimes we we act like we're not part of it, mm. is also interesting. Um, just the forces of nature, how things adapt, how things interact. It's just uh, you know, while other people like Power Rangers. I like Animal Planet. <laughs> you know, so that was that was me. Uh, and then martial arts. I'm uh, I'm a warrior at heart. I've always mm, part of me have always, has always enjoyed fighting to some degree um okay sound like a trouble not, kid sound like a troublesome kid to me man. <laughs> fighting uh, i had a little bit of that i had a little bit of that uh and also you know being an immigrant immigrant's child uh getting picked on and then my parents are kind of severe at home and i think just the compounded effect just well, 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 yeah, it, just back it, up a little bit man. To, it's back up you I'm said saying, at least to you know at least to a lot of anger and I th I'm glad that I found my way to martial arts because that gave me a way to productively, uh, you wow. know. You, you put a lot, Oops. you put a lot there just now. I mean, it's typically known, still typically, you know, that Taiwanese parents are, they can be very heavy handed, you know, pretty strict on their, on their kids, you know, you know, and, you know, education wise and stuff like that. And I'm, I'm sure you pass every one of those tests, right? You didn't, you did not fail, not even one of those tests. 
Um, oh, no I, comment I right now, right? <laughs> <laughs> but but tell me, man. You said you're a warrior at heart, man. I mean, how do, how is it growing up, looking different from the typical so-called Americans? You know, back home. I mean, you being Asian and stuff in Boston can be quite a tricky thing, right? Because you know, there's a lot of things in the news that's been going on recently. But tell me about your experience. Uh, I would say, you know, the Boston area, New England in general, the Northeast, is a, it's a weird mix of being mm, uh, conservative and progressive. It's a weird mix of being uh, unfriendly and friendly. It's a weird mix of people saying that um, they're not racist, but they act a certain way or they talk a certain way behind mm-hmm. your back. Or they'll pick on you when they're, you know, or when they're drunk, it all slips out, right? It's, it's that kind of... <laughs> Is that kind of environment? So it's um, it's a little weird because sometimes sometimes you go and you know as a as a somebody who is uh, obviously not from there genetically, I guess mm-hmm. by appearances, right? I mean, I'm from there, but I'll always be I'll always be Asian when I'm there in a way. Do you get the right? question when people say where are you from? And then they look and you say where are you really from? Do you get those type of remarks that I oh, would yeah, say? I just, I just I just tell them I'm from my mom. Like that's, oh. that's all I say. and that would start a good fight. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm from my mom. What am I supposed to say? Like, doesn't matter, right? I'm an American, but uh, I would say I would say it's uh, it can be it can be a confusing time for for uh, for a young person and. Uh, for me, also, there's also Chinese people. Obviously, I'm Taiwanese American, mm-hmm. and Chinese people have a certain perspective on what Taiwanese are allowed to be and not allowed to be. Wow! And that can be uh, that can be an interesting thing to throw in the mix. So, for me, what I what I learned out of all that was to never never have a victim mindset towards things. What what, what, yeah. what made you have that type of mindset? Because this is this is important for all minorities in yeah, places like the yeah. United States or m- most Western nations. I mean, how do you manage to stay out of the so-called victim pothole, victim mentality? How did you rub that off? How do you throw that off of you? Because in some places, it's just not inherent to do so. It's always something like, well, I'm in this situation because of this, this, and that. How, how did you shake that off? That, oh, man, that... I mean, I didn't shake it off. I think this was a years long uh, process. I just realized one day where it didn't, uh, things didn't bother me the same way. I just accepted them for what they were and work with it. Um, like, I think, I think, I think history actually helped me. Uh, not in terms of, you know, when we think of a like history class, whatever, I, mm-hmm. just reading about people who overcame a lot of stuff. What in particular or who in particular? They didn't wallow in it, you know, like, oh, they did this to me. They did that to me, blah, blah, blah. They said, what am I going to do? Is there anyone in particular that that comes to mind? Or any Uh, book, event? I mean, winners and losers. I mean, like uh, uh, one of one of my first uh, people that I looked into, I don't really I don't want to say idolize. I don't actually idolize Mm -hmm. anybody. Uh, I think I think that does their humanity a disrespect because we're all human, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to idolize them. They're not ever going to live up to the ideal picture, right? But um, Tecumseh, uh, the Shawnee uh, warrior and chieftain who tried to unite all the— it was basically the last uh, major attempt at unification um, prior to the War of 1812, right? That, mm-hmm. that, that was a big deal. I look at that guy and I was like— even though he failed, uh, even though he saw the tide was turning against his people, it didn't mean he was going to sit around and say, oh, look at the, you know, Kentucky militia. Oh, look mm-hmm. at blah, blah, blah. Oh, look at them flooding to Ohio. Look, look what they're doing to us. You know, oh, how could my ancestors leave this legacy for me? How could? No, he's not sitting around doing that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm sure he's had those thoughts. I think all of us have all of us that have been a victim of anything probably have that thought of. Why would that ever happen? Why would you do that to me? Why mm-hmm. would you speak to me like that? Why would you be disrespectful? Why would you attack me? Whatever, right? But it's while it's, under, uh, while it's important to understand the why or understand how you got where you were, uh, it's probably more important to start moving towards the better future if right. possible. 
And understanding how you got there helps you approach getting out of it. But understanding it and just sitting there, one, you're going to have a bad day anyways. Mm -hmm. And two, you're not going to make progress, right? So for me, I was like, all right. Um, um, I, 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 re, I figured out, I figured out that I'm Asian American and that, uh, that that comes with some, some pros and cons. And I, I didn't let that aspect, um, bother me. So if I am, I'm, I mean, I'm not, I'm going to say I was like a wise person or anything. I was definitely an angry child, but, uh, if you tell me I can't do something mm -hmm. and I know that I can do it. Mm -hmm. then I felt even more pressure to show I can do it. That means um, you're stubborn. You know, <laughs> there's a stubborn, there's a stubbornness. There's a unwillingness to admit defeat. And that's why I say I'm a, I'm a warrior at heart. I'm trying to, I'm always trying to find that, that, that lane that I can run to, uh, to some kind of victory, mm -hmm. some kind of good result. But just you know, hold on for a second. A long shot, I'm going to try to take it. I'm going to pull you back a little bit because you said something. There are pros and cons just now. What do you, yeah, what do you yeah. mean by pros and cons? Um, I would say this, and this is, this is obviously, this is my perspective, you know, born in 1990, uh, Metro Boston area. So this might not be the same as all Asian Americans. I mean, if you're in Hawaii, it might be different. California might be different, but uh, I think for me growing up, pros and cons to being, being an Asian American male are that there's assumptions made of you mm -hmm. that are sometimes positive and sometimes negative. And can and, you talk a little bit about that now? <laughs> this is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, some of this, some of this is stereotype. Some of this is actual statistical trend. Um, so, and, and I had to learn that sometimes people default to these kind of things out of ignorance, and that's an educational opportunity, not an opportunity for me to just get mad at them. Um, but sometimes it's it's just disrespect, right? So I had I had to learn over the course of many years that there's a difference between ignorance and disrespect, you know, because someone lives a different life than me and has a different perspective. But from my perspective, being an Asian American male means that you're unless un unless you prove yourself. Uh, when you're when you're on court, the uh, the other kids aren't going to automatically pass you the ball. Oh, right, <laughs> right. And I'm I'm not saying I was I was great at it anyway. So, but that's something I realized. Unless unless I unless I face someone out, boom, three pointer, <laughs> and then oh shit, okay, all right, we can play with this guy, right? Unless I unless I had, I had to prove myself <laughs> first. That's okay. That's okay by me. But I'm just saying that every time, you know, the, the assumption is. Yeah, he might look mildly athletic, but no. Nah. Um, I have the same kind of experience in a different way. When I'm, in, you know, I remember a particular time I was playing ball here at Taiwan University, and you know, I just walk in the park after you know a, a, run, a workout, and I get to the, you know, get to rest. And guys, you want to play some basketball? I said okay, you know, and and um, you know, speaking Mandarin, and then we get to play, and I miss all my shots almost. And I and the guys looked at each other and said, "Why did we pick a black person who can't play basketball?" Boy, that shocked me. <laughs> Man, I, I went home with a very bad, bad, broken heart. Yeah, no, exactly. In, in, in this case, I mean, you would have the opposite, uh, the opposite stereotype. <laughs> you know, um, I mean, I, I'd be I'd be automatically chosen uh, by a certain kids to do school projects with, and if it was the wrong subject, they chose wrongly. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, the like. We, 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 the culturally, we are hardworking. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt about it. And culturally, we're taught to value uh, education. Yes, you know, uh, you uh -huh. know they say, oh, uh, scholarship and martial, you know, physical ability is important. But let's be honest now. Modern society tilts a certain way, mm -hmm. right? And so, you know, kids would, kids would, kids would want to partner up with uh, Asians because... Um, you're good at math. We're supposed to be more scholastic. Sometimes yeah. we are. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes we are. Not always because we're actually better at it, just because we got parents at home that will make sure we are better at it. <laughs> okay, but, but, but let me go. This is the interesting thing. You know, here I say, you know, 
都是一样的。We we 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 are we have a lot more in common than we think. And you know, this is very interesting、mm. in living in a place like the United States. You know, where maybe our constitution was not when it was written. You know, written for certain people, but over time. We are able to incorporate things. We have something called amendments that we can add to our constitution. Thank goodness,、yes. and we can make、yes. things that maybe were not directed to a certain group of people at one time, but to make it more widely available. This is a really positive thing that a lot of nations do not have. I mean, you know, you you can have other opinions right now. Yes, it makes things a little bit slower. Yes, you have to deal with more sometimes grievances, and a lot of it personal. And、um, there are certain. Packages that come with, how would you say, um, 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 thoughts that they're just not willing to let go, and of course, there's always selective amnesia, and this is something that that you know that maybe people like us can see, but when we try to sometimes talk to people back home about it, it can be be quite rough. Now, you being you know. You know, traveling, and you got other plans going on to to cover martial arts and stuff like that. Can you talk a little bit more about the things that maybe that we can learn? I mean, we as people can learn from each other. Like you say, there is a certain thing built into Asian communities as far as you know, scholastic stuff, reasoning, and stuff like that.、Mm. That there's got to be a way we can take these elements that are quite. Positive and cross it, you know, cross breed it in some ways. That's an interesting word. Do you think there's any possibility for that? I think so. I think so. I mean, actually, this this ties into what I was talking about there, right? Stereotypes.、Um, and I, I can go on, and, and there's a lot of negative and positive stereotypes about being Asian American. But one of the things that I appreciate about a lot of Asian cultures is.、Um, At least in my experience, people are not as focused on your talent.、Hmm. In America, at least when I was growing up, I, I noticed a lot of people. Oh, you're so smart. Oh, you're so talented at this. Wow, you've got a knack for this. You know, like people have this idea that you as an individual can be predisposed to something, and you should pursue it. And that's not a bad thing. But you see, on the converse, you have other people that are like, "Oh, I guess I'm not talented at this.、Hmm. I guess I don't have a knack for this, right?" And although sometimes it's taken to a brutal level, I think in an Asian style education or their approach to teaching people how to do something, there's a system, and you work towards it. If someone is already talented at a subject or at a sport. They may not have to work as much to meet the standard.、Mm-hmm. If you're not, you're going to have to work more to meet、right. the standard.、Mm-hmm. But one of the beautiful things is most people can, if they have good system of training, get that standard. They may have to work more.、Mm-hmm. They may have to find other ways, but they can they can make it there. And so I find that in America, there's a lot of people who say. Oh, I like this, or I want to do this, or I, I have, I'm talented at this, or you're so talented, you got a knack for that.、Um, focusing on inherent inherent traits and talents, rather than I'm going to do this, and I know I may have to work harder than the next guy, or I may have to, but it puts a different level of diligence in the person. What do you mean by that, though? When you say different levels of diligence. You know, because you mentioned, I, like I, I mentioned, you did too about how culturally inherent certain traits are, as far as education stuff like that. Even, even in African nations where education is also held high, you know, it's just a different flavor of what is important based on your cultural environment. Sometimes, what do you mean by that? Yeah, I think, I think there's just a different relationship between between teacher and student. And your concept of education. So in America, I feel that, in my experience, people oftentimes say, "Oh, this is a mandatory thing that I've got to do," and、mm-hmm. that、uh, maybe I'm predisposed to it, maybe I'm not. But I'll just I'll get through it. In Asian cultures, as far as I know, you respect your teacher.、Mm-hmm. This is not like, a, "Oh, I'm stuck in the room with them." You may not like them, but you respect your teacher. And respect is not just like, "Hey, how are you?" Respect is、uh, a mindset. 
and I'm not saying again, I'm not saying like this shit can be can't be abused. I'm not saying this is infallible. I'm just saying this is the way it's done here. Mm -hmm. And people respect their teachers. Uh, People strive to people strive not only to make themselves proud of what they put their name on, Mm -hmm. but their parents proud of what they put their name on. And if you get far enough, your your teacher or your coach proud of what you put your name on. Right. And I'm not saying that doesn't happen in America where maybe you have a coach who you have a good you have good rapport with. So when you get that medal, it's you and your coaches. Right. In a way. Or like you 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 go into some kind of uh, speech and debate or some kind of qualifying examination and you come back and you tell your favorite teacher, hey, you know, I did this. Yeah. You know, but in, in Asia, in Asian cultures, the that relationship is is tighter, I think. Yeah, I mean, this is not to say it's, it's it's equally, you know, across the board. That, that, you know, that's not possible. It's not that's not possible. But there's yeah. there's yeah. there's outliers to that, right? Yeah, and so and so I feel a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of Asian people approach education in a in a somewhat in a somewhat different way. And I think it leads to overall collectively, not every individual, but it leads to overall. A different level of diligence. Uh, does it leave some things out? I, I do. I do think it leaves mm-hmm. some things out. It doesn't give kids as much room for confidence. It doesn't give kids as much room for initiative. Mm-hmm. It doesn't give kids as, no, no, as much room for creativity. But technically speaking, they will probably get. They will go through the system of training and get whatever it is down uh, to, on average. A much higher degree. Mm-hmm. You might have eighty percent of your class being ace at whatever, versus fifty percent of your class being pretty good, and the rest kind of petering out, right. falling off right. the chart. Right. So it's a different approach. Again, it has its flaws, but I think what we can learn from that is, you know, oh, I got bad genetics. Ooh, I'm unlucky. Oh, I got born in a in a in a in a mm-hmm. poor neighborhood. Oh no. Yes, you did. Those are facts. But then what are you going to do with that? Right. Because the, 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 the metric is there. The work is there. Right. The social infrastructure is there. And um, at least to some degree, you have too many things holding you back. Uh, but if but he, no matter what's holding you back externally, don't be that. Don't be holding yourself back internally. You know, set, set yourself up to to do it, you know, whatever that takes. You know, there, there's some special reasons why I also brought you here and um you know, I'm going to turn on the little, I'm going to turn on the lock right now because, you know, a lot of things are going going on, especially back home where we come from. And uh, a lot of it is sensitive. A lot of it is sensitive. Mm. sensitive. Mm. And yes. education, you, you know, we've been talking about education for the past, well, maybe at least 12 minutes mainly. And this is, you know, what I'm deeply into. I mean, to not education, I'm into globalized in, international in, in, um education where people can actually get an opportunity to see how we live in our own environment. What do I mean? Sometimes, you know, people need to get outside of their ABC, CBS, NBC, NBC, you know, tunnel vision, Fox, Mm. whatever you want to call it. We got to get out of that. And, you know, I, you know, I, I call my friends, family back home and, you know, you get this story, James, you don't know how it is back here. Yes, you're right. I don't, but I do see from my perch here in Taiwan, something that can be useful, something that can be helpful. And, you know, there's this something, there's this thing in the United States called critical race theory, you know, mm. you know, and, it, and it's bothering some where they, they talk about, you know, race and being, racism being since, uh, what's the English word for it? Synthetic. <laughs> uh, <laughs> see, systemic racism. Yeah, that's systemic it. You see my English is, I'm losing my English, man. Yeah. But this has kind of been bothering me, you know. I've, I've you know, I've, I, it's, it was very hard for me to when I'm in conversation with some people back home, you know, FaceTime, Skype, whatever. But you know, there's some things that yes, things happen and bad things happen in the past. We we know what leaders try to do. Whether you're talking about Malcolm X or, or Jing and Bosch, uh, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King, we know what happened in Selma. We know what happened when the imprisonment, you know. Uh, during the Japanese, you know, during World War II, we we know, or yeah, that's what we they, we say the word imprisonment, right? 
but this is something that bothers me, you know? And, you know, you got African-Americans talking about reprimands and stuff like that. Yes, this is important. But the thing is, the past should be just our guidebook. This is coming from my perspective now, and I'm sure we're going to get a lot of nasty letters. It's a guidebook to help us avoid making the same mistakes over and over again. And this is something that bothers me. And you, you have a heavy, you have a lot of knowledge on, on what happens out here in the Asian culture. And you probably see a lot of things being re repeated. And a lot of things that have been repeated can explain why the current uh, nations in Asia are having a certain type of rebirth, as you want to call it, or rethinking of their relationship with, especially West, Western nations. But, but what I want to talk about is, you know, coming from the community you are from, you know, do you see any attempts of people trying to, I mean, you, you keep saying, you know, acknowledge your situation, then think about how to move on. What do you see as these, these things that are causing these bottlenecks to personal growth and which affects community growth? I'll just, I'll just say what comes to mind. We'll go from there. Uh, as far as, uh, first, first off is uh, responsibility. First off is responsibility. I, I think, I think, in Asia and as far as I know, Africa. I, I'm just basing this off of what one of my Nigerian friends had told me uh, when he was in school in Africa. But the attitude is, students come in, they sweep the floor, they clean the place. This is their classroom, mm -hmm. you know, and they pay respect to the teacher, and the teacher begins teaching, and they try to download as much of that as they can. I'm not saying every student actually takes in that and internalizes that kind of respect and responsibility. But that's what the rituals of, of cleaning and all this is right. supposed to help engender. That your education is your education. It's not the teacher's education that they're just spitting at you and hoping that something gets into your brain. It's your education. You got to claw your way through as much of it as possible if you can, right? Uh, so I think a lot of times Americans take education um, for granted. Obviously, if you tell them, oh, would you like there to be no school system? No, they're not going to say yes, generally speaking, right? But I remember as a kid taking education for granted too because it's mandatory, you're forced to do it, and you sit through things, and it's – it's hard to see based in one because of the assumptions about education and also the uh, what you're being taught. It's hard to see how this is helping me to get a good job and to be a good citizen. I'm not I'm not really being taught history, for example, in a way where I am. In most, in most classes, I'm not being taught in a way where I would be able to uh, apply it? interpretations oh. to things. There's a certain narrative. Whether that's good or bad, there's a certain narrative. That narrative oftentimes is, well, this is just how things played out. Uh, whereas th this is where I, would, where I feel is the first bottleneck is that if you take responsibility of your education and you uh, – and therefore, you take responsibility of who you become as a citizen, right? You you don't want to be just fed facts and fed a certain narrative. You want this to be responsibility oriented. So if mm -hmm. I have a responsibility as a citizen, I want to understand why there's a disparity between white Americans, black Americans. Mm -hmm. They came pretty close in time to with each uh, uh, with each other as far as colonization of America and all right. that. Why is there this difference? And what can we do about it? And what are the positions being given by, by different sides? Right? That's useful. Mm -hmm. you right? know, if you give me dates and names, that doesn't stick. If you give me stories and you give me reasons why my present condition is the way it is, that's relevant to the human brain. One, we like stories. We learn that way. Right. Two, I want to know why... I want to know that why this guy or this girl has a perception of the world that's already kind of put on them just by okay. being who they are, right? 
School should teach that. Yeah. You got to make them more, yeah, more interactive. Right? So there's a responsibility of society to give that to our kids so that they can have a sense of responsibility and ownership over their education about like what kind of what kind of it should be about what kind of adult do I want to be rather than oh you have to go through all this so you can get your GED or your your diploma and then and then you can start being an adult. What kind of adult do I want to be? Like let's not let's not say um, it's too early for anyone to say what do you want to be when you grow up when you're five years old, mm-hmm. right? But maybe you want to maybe the the kid before he he's learned racism or before he's learned classism or before he's learned to be like that. To maybe he wants to say, well, you know, I, I want to be, I want to be the kind of uh, person who can listen to other people. I want to be the kind of person who can help my community. I want to be the kind of person who can, whatever. You know, if you frame it that way, I think it's more useful in some ways. I'm not, I'm not, I don't, I wouldn't call myself a great, a great educator. I'm not, you know, a great. Uh, I'm not deep into, you know, different philosophies on how to teach people, but. I think fundamentally that sense of responsibility is missing. And when, you, when you're responsible for it, you're going to take care of it. What, what I was trying to dig more into was the perception of, you know, there's certain elements in our past that are at their privileged position because of the cultural gifts they were afforded, whether it's financial, position-wise, whatever. And I personally see it as as the hidden trap door that's keeps, that is keeping democracies like ours um, just stalled right now and also mm. make it more susceptible mm. to external influences to just cause inter- so much internal infighting, inf- you know, th- that will affect the whole nation as a whole. But, you know, that 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 can probably, that'll be a whole, you know, maybe we talk about this again because this, it is quite sensitive because, you know, Human rights now is a big thing, not only out here in Asia, but you know, back home also. It's and yeah. You, yeah, you know, recently, you know, you're Asian, you know, there's, there was this big influx, you know, this year and maybe up to two years ago about, you know, because of this C-19 that's hit us all here, you know, and uh, causing a lot of problems and saying coming from uh, here in Taiwan, we say the neighbors next door. And so much hate and pressure put on the Asian community. I mean, did did you actually uh, feel any of that while you were back home in the states? Uh, no. So I moved here. I moved here last year, January sixteenth. Uh, mm-hmm. Landed. So I basically got here before, just before COVID blew up on the news. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, so I haven't really had to face any of the problems, but I know that. Back in the USA, uh, there's a serious uptick in anti-Asian rhetoric, anti-Asian crime, anti-Asian attitudes, right? Um, so I, I'm going to tie this together with something you said earlier, which is, you know, there's uh, certain inequalities and certain things that have happened historically that have resulted in our world today, right? That's a very nice way to put it. Um, I think... We got to look at a we got to look at a longstanding trend that whatever group is calling themselves Americans, mm-hmm. uh, anytime they're financially uh, squeezed, socially squeezed, they're under a lot of pressure. They're losing jobs, or they're they're fear that they're going to lose jobs. They they lash out at that other group that they call the other, and this is not unique in human psychology to just Americans, but Americans have it too, right? As much as we like to think of ourselves as having a land of laws and equal liberties, human rights, human uh, civil liberties, etc. cetera. Uh, you know, we, we have those problems too. And there were times when the government was not all that against this kind of stuff happening or sometimes was part of it. Right. So, uh, you know, you have, you have any, t- uh, when you had a lot of more European immigration, the British that were already here didn't like them. Mm-hmm. Right. And when, when economic times are tough, you will, you're going to see a gang of people go out and kill Irish people or kill Italian or, you know, things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when you have Chinese and Filipino laborers, uh, you know, people are, people are one, afraid of the influence of quote unquote oriental civilization. They're afraid of uh, Asian men taking their jobs and they're afraid of Asian men taking their women. And 
so they've got to have race riots and kill Asians. This is this is the this is for whatever reason the natural response, right? Uh, a lot of jobs get outsourced. A lot of manufacturing and um, manufacturing jobs get outsourced. Then you have uh, blue collar people attacking Asians because they're getting outsourced to Asian countries. Mm-hmm. Um, when Texas got got uh, absorbed into the USA, uh, the Tejanos that helped uh, help the help the the uh, American settlers uh, revolt against Mexico. They uh, a lot of them got lynched because. Right. Uh, because because there's these uh, there's the slave owning class of the South kind of moving in. They're always looking for new land at that time, and uh, the Tejanos were a group of people that already had their own established thing. They already had their own productive uh, societies and agriculture, and that just that needs to go because that's in the way of my thing. There's this scarcity mindset that's very pervasive. Uh, so you know we we can we can, we can we can we keep going with this, but basically. Today, uh, you know, there's COVID-19, there's uh, all the all the social problems that are revealed or caused by it. Because sometimes sometimes there's stuff that was already a problem that we can kind of skate by. But once you <laughs> yeah. have pressure on the system and the system is having trouble standing, then you see these problems pop out. Then you have supply chain issues. Then you have people losing their jobs. You got people cooped up inside. And they see an Asian face and they say, oh, it's that motherfucker. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, you know, and 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 the law enforcement in these places either is unable or unwilling to, um, to to do a lot about it. Like, there, it's it's basically a there's a higher chance of you getting away with it if you act on that anger. Hmm. That's what it seems, right? That's what it seems. Again, I'm I'm sitting over here in Taiwan watching the news, mm-hmm. so that's what it seems. Um, at least I must imagine that that's, that's the impression that people who are attacking Asian people must have because mm-hmm. if you're shot on site or arrested on site, this stuff will stop pretty quick. <laughs> what? Right? I'm saying if you've got immediate consequences, this stuff would stop. Mm-hmm. But you don't. And there's an uptick. And so and in some places, a major uptick. And so I think, I think here's the thing. Um, they clearly the people who are doing this don't see Asian Americans as Americans. Hmm. They don't see them as fellow Americans. And even if they are fellow Americans, they're not the kind of fellow Americans that they care for. Well, right. that's not that's and not they, they that's become. not across the board of the say the whole population. Not not so much, right? I mean that that's that's not a perception of all Americans though. No, but I'd, I'd say the people who are who are doing these kind of things, okay, okay, harassing, attacking, etc. I yeah. think I think it's pretty clear that um, you know when you go into that sort of like right. primitive primitive part of the brain, it's like oh you're the enemy now. That's the lizard part. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, you see, you hear stories about, yeah, they, they're taking out jobs and stuff like this. You know, a couple of years ago there was a movie called American Factory. The the thing that I got from it from watching watching it and also from early information is, is that sometimes, and I'm, here we go again, I'm going to, here we go some more, another cans of potatoes here, opening up here. But, um, you know, it is important for us as individuals to keep, to keep us, keep ourselves educated, keep ourselves up to date, to, to always keep ourselves recharged and not get lazy and not get yeah. too comfortable. Or they say, what well, Dao Ching Xing, not drop your guard. And in this yeah. situation, and we know, you mentioned a little bit about business. You know, when you're a businessman, you really want your return on investment. And if prices are too high someplace, you're going to move. You're going to do something to keep your prices yeah. lower, to keep your investors happy, and to keep your purchasing power up there. And this is this is what's happening. What happened in the states? You know, we a lot of people from other nations, third world nations, we want to call them that, came over and they really absorbed the education. Because they were hungrier than a lot of us yeah. Americans who had maybe generational comfort, whether it's through wealth or 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 employment and stuff like that, or these big mm-hmm. factories mm-hmm. that had um, unions and stuff like that power. But the thing is, there's a shift when you get into a, the the globalization gear, where investment mm-hmm. is what it's all about, where keeping um, investors happy and, and keeping your pocket aligned. 
And I think this is something, especially li me living out here, you, know, you see people here constantly keeping themselves updated on information, learning and stuff like that. And I think back home, I, even people that I know, did, when they got to a certain age or a certain position in life, they really stopped being hunger. That they didn't have that hunger anymore. They just wanted to, we got this and this, let's maintain this. Well, it, the, the rest of the world was just a lot hungrier than us. And this is why a lot of people from other parts of the world, especially Western nations, maybe looked in such looked at it in such a particular way of them taking over our land, taking over our people, taking over our privilege. And this is something that, you know, I have a hard time talking to people with back home. And, you know, and makes me, it causes me to get canceled. I've gotten canceled over it, you know, and yeah, something to laugh about. It's something to laugh about, but it's, it's hard yeah. for me, man. And, and, and part of the reason me talking to you, this is, this is thera therapeutic for me. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. and we got incidents where a couple of weeks ago, an incident happened in Philadelphia on the subway. Mm, yep. Yep. And these girls, they had a really they have, these are problem African-American girls that physically attacked an, a, an Asian girl and, and, and hit some guys. Yeah. And the guys did not, yeah. you know, did not respond physically. I wish they did. And frankly, I wish they would have yeah. stood up and kicked them girls' yeah. rear apples because they deserved it. And, you know, this, and when, when I saw this, it just really hurt me so much. I was like, what the hell? A couple of weeks ago, up no, I say about a month, uh, almost two months ago, there was an incident where a person, man in China, put on um, TikTok a recording of teaching her, her daughter not to talk to a certain black person because, you know, black people are known for doing bad things and this and that to Asian. And I'm like, wait a minute. When that happened, I did a broadcast and a certain web, a certain um, influencer uh, saw me talking about it and invited me on his show. And we, we, were, we were speaking in Mandarin and really got my message that people have a lot more in common than they think. And this little coloring thing that we have on our skin sometimes can be the poison that separates the world and maybe the poison that destroys the world in the end. And, you know, part of the reason why I got you on this show to talk a little bit about your thoughts about that. And as I said, it's also therapeutic for me. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, yeah. you have comments on that because, you know, you may be getting a different signal from, say, the Asian community, not only from back in Boston or stateside, but even right here in Taiwan, you may get questions like, hey, is America like that? I, my, my, my Taiwanese friends, they, they, they're saying, James, what's going on? You know? And yeah, and, and yeah. I'm, I don't know what to say if I'm embarrassed I'm, I, or I'm just I'm, I'm dumbified. How about that? That's the easy way to put it. It, it can be a little difficult for me sometimes because um, I've got I've got I've got some black friends, right? And I don't want to. I, I need to use oftentimes I have to make it clear to the Asian audience, not the Asian American audience necessarily, but the Asian audience, you know, whoever's asking me, oh, is it really that racist? I, I gotta. I, I always have to say, yeah, it can be, but it can easily not be, mm -hmm. and it really depends on the person you're dealing with, and maybe sometimes regional or whatever. Uh, it could vary by the neighborhood, um, so it can be, but it is. It's, it's not. It's not always like this, and it's recently gotten worse, at least for for Asians, because of aforementioned situation in the mm -hmm. world and all that. Um, you know, but then, and then I get another question a lot of times, like, "Oh, well, black people were really oppressed. Why would they, why would they do this if they themselves were treated like this or worse?" You know, back then and sometimes still now, right? Why? Why would why would they why would they treat us like that? We didn't do anything. We didn't go and do anything to them. And that's a. This gets into what I was talking about before, where when America gets squeezed, people are going to lash out. And uh, uh, this uh, this is a a tough topic for me to, to approach because um, one, it's just a big topic, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And two, it's important for me to impress upon people that this is a psychological thing that any group of people can go through. It's just that in America, 
people that look like me are the minority. And so it's going to happen that way. But I mean, this, ha- this has happened in Europe for a thousand, uh, over a thousand years with Jewish people mm-hmm. where, oh, oh, things are tough. Let's go kill some Jews. I'm, not, I'm sure the conversation didn't go exactly like that. But that that scenario has played out, I don't know how many hundreds of times throughout European history. Mm-hmm. Times are tough. Let's kill Jews. Right. Because they're that foreign group that lives among us. Um, I'm try- I, 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 whenever people ask me this question, I have to impress upon them like, yes, and there are African-Americans that are aware of that. And there are African-Americans that just don't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. And you're going to always have those kind of people in your population. Some people are like, yeah, you know, we don't treat other people like that. We've been through that. We're not going to do that to others. Mm-hmm. But there, there's, then there's going to be others who just don't give a fuck. And it also goes back to what we were talking about before with uh, these sort of potholes. Uh, like, you know, it's easy to fall into a victim mindset. The scarier scarier thing than a victim mindset is a victim mindset that has a, has a sense of pride, the, a sense of like, ooh, I got to do something to these people that are victimizing me. Right. Right. Um, and for whatever reason, people tend to punch down rather than. Yes. Uh, rather than rather than band together, they tend to punch down. If I can't be number one, these motherfuckers are not becoming number two. <laughs> right. Psychologically speaking, I, I don't know if people are literally thinking. Yeah, right, right, right. But they behave this way. Mm-hmm. Right. So I'm trying. These are these are deep things that you know you have to draw upon a lot of uh, like different examples throughout different places. Different, you know, and it's like, you know, sometimes I, I tell people like, hey, everybody, even even a lot of white some people, they got the heavy end of the stick during the uh, yes the mar- martial law era. But there's a lot of holo and haka people that were still calling Yenzumi, mm-hmm. whether out of habit. Or out of uh, condescension, like misogyny, you know, out, out of looking down on them. Right. Granted, we didn't have the kind of racial violence that we saw in the U.S. or you see in other places, but that attitude is there. Why, attitude-wise, did you punch down when you were also being crushed? Mm-hmm. Right. Granted, I'm not saying that when martial law lifted, that there weren't a lot of uh, Taiwanese Minang people, you know that uh, championed Aboriginal rights and championed all that, of course, but there are also, of course, prejudiced people or people that are intellectually lazy or people that are like, oh, well, you know, it's because these guys, you know, they're lazy, they're whatever. It's like people that want to scapegoat, Mm -hmm. people that want to do that kind of stuff. So I have to try to explain to people here that like, no, not all. Yes, depends where sometimes it is this bad. Why this is complicated, but we all have it in us if we are if we choose to, you know, act this way. And um, and you know, if you ever visit America, I mean, depending on where you are, you may never come across this kind of stuff. Yes. Or this kind of stuff might be a daily occurrence. It just it really depends on where you are. You know, China's a, China, U.S., Russia, India. These are big countries. It's hard to make just one generalization about the entire national attitude. Right. Right. It's tough. So you know, it's it's tough for me to explain because I know it's a hot potato. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's it's tough, and I don't want to misrepresent. You know. Personally, I don't want to misrepresent my friends. You know, no, Vincent, friends it, no matter which and way you go, those kind of attitudes. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, no matter which way you go, on your personal level with people that you meet who may not have your similar background, you'd be surprised if you're just able, mm-hmm. if you just have the ability or the opportunity to give mutual relationships the time to build. I mean, I, yeah. I can't even count the number of times, and I've been here for so long that I, my friends will tell me that are right now my friends, they'll say, you know, when I first met you, I thought this, 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 and that. And they'll just yeah. come up to me. You know, yeah. you hang out with them and, you know, you know, you're eating with them. And they say, you know, when I first met you, boom, 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 boom. It's like, well, mm-hmm. it's wrong. Yes, people have a lot more in common than we think. Yes, there are people in our communities that are just total boneheads. I do believe yeah. that most people are good. 
I do believe that. I see it out here. I see people who are in their so-called tribe. They'll just be. They, they appear to be the opposite, but on a personal level, they'll just tell you, "Well, no, you know, they're they're afraid to be different because of acceptance." I, you know, sometimes. Yeah. So they yeah. carry that kind yeah. of negative baggage that may appear to be fierce, but really, no, they have fears too. And a lot of people, a lot of people, want to be good. Yeah. <laughs> and then a lot of people would rather make friends than enemies. Yes. You know, and sometimes it's about giving giving that opportunity. I mean, this is quick, but I remember, I remember one time somebody said something very, very stereotypical to me. I, this was back when I was in college in the States. Um, it said something really stereotypical to me. I don't remember the details, but some Asian stereotype. It wasn't necessarily negative. It was just a stereotype. Uh, I don't remember what it was, but I kind of, I gave him a hard time over it. <laughs> um, but I kicked myself later because I realized his dumbass was actually trying to like start a conversation, and he 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 he, he had no idea what being Asian American is all about, mm -hmm. except for stereotypes in Hollywood. So, right. I I that that was my my responsibility then and there. My my opportunity, if I own that moment rather than being reactionary, if I own that moment, I could say. I could laugh it off and be like, hey, man, actually, you're wrong about that. Mm -hmm. I'm actually not blah, 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 you know, and we can we can start. We can I can open that door to understanding uh, rather than slam the door in his face. Right. Hmm. He didn't learn shit that day. Right. He didn't learn shit that day. He just learned that I'm an angry person at that time. Right. Oh, <laughs> that's that's all he learned. Right. And what did I learn that day? I mean, not that day. I was just like, oh, fucking ignorant people. But then the next day I realized I didn't help them become less ignorant, mm -hmm. right? I didn't help the situation. I just blew up. I basically complained, but I didn't. I didn't help the situation. If I opened the door to understanding and he closed it, fine, fuck it, mm -hmm. right? Oh well, he's not ready for that. He doesn't want to know. Okay, no problem. I don't have to have that conversation. But if he wants to know, and I had a few minutes to spare, I could have said something straight, right? Or even if it's not an objective, like you're right, you're wrong, at least I can give him my perspective, mm -hmm. right? Then he'd be like, oh, yeah, well, I mean, I'm not here to offend people. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, I got something, I got a new perspective that I can I can chew on, you know? And I didn't do that, you know? So it, it's moments like this, you know, that I I, I realized that I'm, uh, you oh. know, the responsibility, taking initiative, taking that moment is, is important to, to to genuinely open the door for like a level eye to eye kind of conversation. Sometimes people take this the wrong way and say, "Oh, let me, you know, let me do like a, a like a dear white people. Let me explain this to you." Mm. And that can come off really condescending. Right. You may be spitting facts, but if you've already disrespected somebody's intelligence, they're not going to listen to you. Even if they're wrong, I'm not saying that I'm not saying people might have the right assumptions. I'm saying if you come at people a certain way, branding is important. If you come at people a certain way, they will have rejected you before you even start talking. Well, right? let me if jump. You, if the assumptions are already, you stupid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now let me enlighten you because you stupid. That's not going to work. That's well, not going to work. Just to jump in, you know? jump in, jump in here as a quick comment. Also, it's like um, if you look at the case of America. Other countries, nations on this world, they know more about us than we know about them. They learn more about how to maneuver in a Western culture than we were ever taught how to maneuver in theirs. And this is quite dangerous. If people in a, as a, in a multicultural group, for example, spent a little bit more time to understand what are certain things that are taboo in their culture or taboo in the other country? A co culture, you know, I had a little kid come up to see, see it, come up to me and say, what's up, my beep, N-word stuff. Like, I was like, whoa, right? But luckily, yeah. I, I was here long and said, well, why do you say that? And, and you know, the kid was smiling, so it, it wasn't, you know. And I said, well, you heard this? Oh, I heard this in the movie. That's one thing. I was like, oh, man, media. 
the next thing I'm, I'm doing, I was doing like a 7K run in, uh, in northern Taiwan and running. And a guy zipped by me on a motorcycle, Taiwanese. And he said, what's up, my beep? And I was like, what the heck? And, you know, it's like it was like 100 degrees out here. Yes, right. I run in 100 degrees weather. I'm, I'm not lying. Nice. Right. And uh, I got my water pack, but I was I got angry and I went after the guy for like two kilometers straight. It was here in New Taipei City. And he stopped at the light and I was like, I'm going to tell this guy. And he's like, you know, he's 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 eating something called we in China, we call it bing lang, um, 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 beetle nut. Bing lang. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like. I was, I got emotional. I was like, and I, and I was like, that really pumped me up to run those two kilometers after this guy. And then I catch up to him. He sees me out the corner of his eyes and he was like, so happy to see me. And he spoke good English. Well, good enough English. <laughs> and he was speaking yeah. and he had the bing long and, and he was like, so happy to see me. He was like, what's up my, and I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And, and it, it hit me because he was using terms yeah. that, yeah. They don't teach you in these English books. And I'm like, no. yo, 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 whoa, hold, hold, hold on, hold on. Uh, did you live in the States? Yeah, I lived in L.A. Yeah, but I did I did two years prison time. And I said, okay, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> the guy was in jail for two years. And I can yeah. guess what kind of, who, who he was, who, who he was in jail with. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. they taught him some good English. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but... This is what I mean. If you take the time, sometimes it can be under pleasant situations and maybe not, to learn about what is taboo in each other's culture or sensitive, that could negate a lot of misunderstandings, just like the, you know, dear white people letter, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah. You, know? you know, honestly, a lot of this stuff, it, it's <laughs> like, at least to me, you know, sharing food, handshake mm. invite each other over like that 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 starts it off dinner because diplomacy <laughs> psychologically it breaks down that otherness mentality you know they not us well if you got a friend that's like that then that's part of your group now so they can't be that foreign because they're part of your group your mom likes them they come over for thanksgiving you go over there for thanksgiving you share mm -hmm. different kind of foods you learn new words like then you, they can't be that alien to you anymore. Right. You know what I'm saying? And like music, dance, food, could be martial arts, could be sports, it could be, there's all kinds of places that we can, we can do that, you know? And so it's, it's, it's actually kind of, this goes along with what you are saying earlier and also the fact that, um, you know, that Americans have got, easily get complacent. But, you know, it's good to have a sense of curiosity and, and just general goodwill to to reach out the hand and be like, hey, you know, I'm so-and-so, you know. And in other words, welcome them in for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And they welcome you in for a little bit and you can understand them, you know. You might not agree with everything. You might not like everything on the plate. You might not like everything in the culture. Right. But at least you have a perspective and at least you have a link. You have a bond with somebody, even if it's just how, how, how are you every morning? At least it's a positive, it's a positive link. Right. And then on the flip side, the other person, you know, people, people in their homeland might be asking, oh, but yeah, but you live next to these kind of people. Isn't it, isn't it stressful? Isn't it hard? Isn't it whatever? They're like, oh no, actually my neighbor is really cool. Like, yeah, I see some kids on the street that, you know, clearly they don't have parents around and they're kind of troublesome. You know, that's how mm -hmm. it is anywhere. Big kids don't have parents around. Right. But my neighbor's cool. Right. And at least that's a start. That's a start to understanding why, why this stuff is the way it is and what we can do to make it better. Um, and I think I think that's one of the, you know, grand scheme. That's one of the failings of what happened in Philadelphia mm. is that, I mean, those there's so many, to me, there's so many failings there. Like, aside from that girl that stood up for those boys mm -hmm. and got her ass beat, mm -hmm. uh, I don't like that she got her ass beat, but, you know, props to her for uh, standing, standing up, up yeah. to them. You, she, but, you know, you, you're 4 of you one that's, that's a tough one, right? Well, that's a tough one. You know, you, you, but, uh, you, you hit a lot of those it. boys <sighs> were not educated 
to stand up for themselves or to stand up for somebody who just got punished for standing up for you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, you may not want to lay hands on a girl. I get that. Old school education, I get that. But if those girls are beating up on beating up somebody that just stood up for you, the least you can do is push them off. The least you can do is push them off. Right. And pull that girl out of there. Right. The least you can do is push them off. You can grab your backpack. You can shield yourself with like the least you can do is not let her keep getting hurt. But we can Even say that we can say that from re- retrospect, from this perspective, we can say that, you know, that maybe because we are older, mature, more experienced. There's other people on that subway. And I'm sure at least one or two people on the system were capable, whether they were armed, which you probably could not, you know, use a weapon or in some way they could have said something. That's another thing, too. It just, it just, it would, it would just take one person who's trained yes. in how to take care of themselves to just to go a battle ape shit on them, and that would have been another story there. But not, and, and you know, not, not even necessarily. It doesn't, even if it doesn't get that far, an adult who has hmm. like some amount of muscle on them who just yes. push kids off each other, drag that girl out, put her on a, put her on one of the chairs, and be like, "Are you okay? Stay here." Right. And at least separate people. Mm-hmm. Right. And, no one wanted to do that. In fact, there was a rape on that uh, in the, the Philadelphia metro uh, a couple months ago, I think, where literally a, a dude is raping a woman. Yeah. None of the passengers did anything. That's wrong. The the driver saw the on camera because, you know, they got cameras in the train. And so they notified police. And, you know, I think at the next stop or the one after that, the police met them at that oh. stop and took the guy. Right. So we're afraid to help but, each other. <laughs> So that's what I'm saying. So the, the the boys were not educated to stand up for themselves or someone who's helping them. But I can almost so guarantee if something like that happens again, the girl, there will be differences. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and the girls are obviously is either lack of education yeah. or not good education. Right. One one or the other. Or they're getting their education. Their, their parents aren't around enough for whatever reasons. To give mm-hmm. them good education, but somebody else is feeding them something else, right? There's you a know, lot to say about curious, this. Whatever. There's a lot to say yeah. about this because there are people in certain communities. I mean, I, I, I mentioned this in one of my old uh, podcasts. I think in, in one of my Chinese uh, podcasts where I mentioned there are people who, how would you say, they they get benefits from spreading hate, from spreading false interpretations of other people is a business yeah. for some people. Yeah. You know, I yeah. call them, uh, what do I say? Fan mai chohen zhe, you know, thieves, you know, selling people, they're hate merchants. And yeah. I've seen yeah. so yeah. much of this. And it's hard for me to try to explain to someone who's under the influence of an individual like that, say, no, this is not how it really is. Why don't you look at it from this angle? And it's, it's hard sometimes for people to admit that uh, or are unable to see from a different angle, right? And, and, and this leads a lot to how much responsibility is our media, Western media, all medias have problems, mm-hmm. I say. And I, mm-hmm. I mean, even mm-hmm. independent media can lean to one way that can be too dangerous. Oh, yes. should, oh, it yes. should be the media taking the proper um, guidance or sending the proper signals, but that's not working because well, I guess it's a business, too much of a business. It, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a tough one. I mean, um, I, I think me and you can both agree, you know, there's three failings here, the education of the boys, the education of the mm. attacking girls, and then the, the, the adults sitting around and the other students sitting around, nobody did shit, right? Uh, as far as we know, as far as, you know, yeah, for, as, far as far as we, we know. know right now. Um, but yeah, media, media has a, has a problem. And I think this is, this is, this is, this might make for a more volatile situation. I think it already has because right. I told um, you whether it's official media like CNN, Fox news, whatever, or Facebook groups or, uh, certain, uh, don't forget Twitter. Internet personalities, <laughs> uh, or, or or people on Twitter. It's easy to be. It's easy to be a social justice warrior on Twitter and not actually make a difference. Twitter, Twitter's a good one. Um, you know, there's people who, whether by making someone else look bad or by telling you you're special, they they help you 
they help massage you into this this stupid place <laughs> where you they can you they can tell you no nah, you're special but those people are fucking it up mm -hmm. whether it's on a racial basis or an ideological basis or whatever basis those people are fucking it up you're special you did everything right you're good those people are fucking everything up it's 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 because they colonize this place that you're not in a good way it's because there are police that you are not in a good way it's because uh, they came and took your jobs and spreading diseases that you're not in a good way it's because the list goes on we can we can keep going right and, you know the way that they tell people are special it can range everything from you did nothing wrong you're the victim here all the way to because of our DNA and our bloodline, we deserve whatever, and, you know, that goes into a whole nother direction. Right. But it's the same psychology of, no, you're the victim here. And these people are fucking it up. Yeah, and that's, uh, that takes the responsibility out of, out, out of your own uh, situation in life, out of your hands. Mm -hmm. And as much as we are affected by things outside of our control, it's almost always more healthy to focus on what we can bring to the table, what we can control, right? If we let ourselves, and this is a big fault of sensationalist media and echo chambers and uh, groups that either spread ethnocentrism or hate, and they, a lot of go together, right? A lot of the, that, a lot of times those go together because then you kind of need an enemy if you are saying that you're getting oppressed, uh, and sometimes you are. But right. sometimes the solution is not to uh, complain about – oh, I mean complain about is almost never the solution. Um, the solution is usually not picking on people of another race. Mm -hmm. The solution is usually not saying, oh, all these X, Y, and Z are bad because just – it's not. But if your mindset is already that I'm the victim – that's those are the people that are fucking it up for me. Mm -hmm. Fucking liberals, <laughs> fucking conservatives, fucking Asians, right? Fucking blacks, mm -hmm. fucking whites, whatever. It's got to be that target. But then you're right. If you've already gone to that place in your mind, you're only going to go down that road, right? Because that's the next. If that is true, then the logical conclusion is we got to get rid of those people, right? Because I did nothing wrong. I'm now the victim of what they did. They gotta go. Mm -hmm. If you can, if you can get massaged into that assumption that your current state in life has nothing to do with what you've done, you've done everything you can, and they fucked it up. You know this. this and, that means, and that also means that you did not take responsibility of your own education. That's right. You didn't look at it. You didn't look at the same damn thing from five angles. You looked at it from one, or you're told to look at it from one, and you're told what to see, and you're like, oh, okay, got it, yeah. Yeah, they did that to me. You know what I'm saying? Yes. You got told to see it. You got told to see it from an angle, and you got told to see. You got told what that interpretation is. I I know that I'm a dumbass sometimes. When <laughs> I was in college, one morning I read an article and I was a Democrat. In the in the afternoon, I read another article. I was a Republican. <laughs> and then in the evening, I was wondering what the hell just happened to me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That, that's the moment. Part way through college, like I think in my third year, I realized. Oh, this this shit is slick. <laughs> these people can write. These people can write well, and sometimes they. It's not even that they're lying about the facts. It's that the ones they choose to emphasize and the way they word it. Selective amnesia. And I can forget. I can forget about the fact that there's there's other perspectives on this, and that I need to double check things. And I just say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why is it like that? Why? How can we stand for this? And then, you know, in the afternoon, I got the opposite perspective on it. Like, yeah, why? <laughs> same, same thing. And also, that, at least for me, that was my wake up call. Oh, you know, I, I got a responsibility over my own viewpoint on things. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, I'm glad I had that moment. I felt so stupid. <laughs> I was like, how the hell was that Democrat and a Republican the same day? You know, <laughs> it's, the same issue. it's so funny is yeah. that this, you said that moment makes you feel so stupid. It's, I think a lot of it is when we realize there's a lot of things we don't know. We, yeah. the, the narratives we hear, even from our, you know, 
old history books may have just been put there to build up a certain image that in a lot of cases are false. Look at Thanksgiving, for example. That's a yeah. that's full of it needs to be reinterpreted. But oh, the yeah. thing is, you know, not to overreact. You know, there's a lot of things. We we today we talked a lot about a lot of things, and uh, we got we're gonna do this again because <laughs> it's just too much Ooh, for us to yeah. co- to put in, all in one can. And Absolutely. you know, you the you you are the wandering warrior, and I see why. <laughs> And, yeah. you know, and there's so much, we're going to do this again because, you know, I hope we get enough people to comment on, you know, on today's episode. And, and if you listen to this episode, there's a link to my speak pipe page below. You can actually send a, a, a you know, a, a oral message, you know, be recorded, be nice. Cause if you're going to act like a fool, I'll just erase it, but leave a message. <laughs> and maybe when we, uh, Vince and I hook up again. We all play it as in the show to um, try to answer or take your you know opinions, and we won't. I won't take it for granted. But this, oh, yeah. you know, uh, this is something. Be yeah, because we're out here, and yes, there are things that we don't know what's going back on in the states, at least on a personal level. That's obvious, and it goes vice versa. And you know, you know, you know, Vince, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to be with me here on four C's one family, you know, you know, there's a lot of things we need to, to, to do. It's not that we're, we're, we, we are not infallible, but if we just take the time to look beyond those who are pushing certain policies and practices and also just false narratives, it takes a lot of swallowing a different color pill. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. so, Vince, sure. I'm going to let you take us out it's of here. My pleasure as well. So yeah, before it's we... my pleasure as well. And I just want to say, um, you know, Wandering Warrior, a lot of people find, think, uh, have glamorous ideas of like, oh yeah, you know, traveling, martial artists, blah, blah, blah. You know, there's a couple of kind of characters like that on YouTube uh, or, or Instagram or wherever. And one of the things that I, I can't bring you along with me outside of pictures and videos, I can't make you go through my training because you know what if you want to do that stuff you find a way to do it and if you don't you're not going to get off the seat right so that's not my job but there's lessons i learned from doing this stuff and perspectives that i get and i try to this is what i hope i can help people with if they're even if they're not interested in martial arts or going to other places is that you gain perspectives and humility and a discipline and respect and this is not just outwards but it's inwards in martial arts, you yeah, you you're physically you're learning to conquer somebody else, but you're also learning to conquer your bitch self because you might not want to work out that day. You might struggle with something, be like, no, nah, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with this kind of tactic because I'm good at that. No, 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 get your ass back there and and work on it, right? And this goes for your your perspective. I've been listening to CNN all day. You know, I don't like Fox. <laughs> But let me see what they're doing there, over there. Mm-hmm. Let me have my finger on the pulse. Because at the end of the day, I share the home with them, right? Uh, you know, at the end of the day, you're all part of the same country. You might as well know what, you know, 30, 40% of the people are tuning into and hopefully thinking about, hopefully not just accepting a face value, but if they are, might as well understand the rationale. What are their fears and concerns, right? So, so in that case, it's, you know, conquer your bitch mind and say, get off the seat. Go engage with a different perspective. Look at the same thing from different angles. I got two eyes. You got two eyes. We can see the same thing from two different ends and see it different. So, you know, being a warrior at heart is to not accept defeat and always find a way. And sometimes don't let your own self defeat yourself. A lot of people think defeat is, is just being just a total winner when it's not. You can be the total winner on the surface, but be a total loser inside. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you if you learn nothing from defeat or victory, you will get defeated again and again. Right. Even if you win one time, you don't know why. You know, you get things right, but there was no decisiveness and deliberation behind it. Um, it let's say in America, you get something right policy wise, but you forced people into it mm. rather than by consensus. That's it. You do things right the wrong way. 
you get things right, but you don't know why, it'll still backfire. Right. You. you know, so it's 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 important to conquer the inside, the outside, conquer ignorance, conquer uh, laziness, uh, and 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 make friends because you know life's tough. <laughs> it's better to make friends. It's better to make friends. Okay. So I, I I really appreciate you letting me on because uh, my platform is. Yeah, I share stories, but it's a little more geared towards the actual nitty gritty of going places, training things, right? It's it's not as much about the – it's not as good a platform for the philosophy and the perspectives that come out of putting yourself through that. And so like you guys, you know, it's a pleasure for me and I appreciate it. Yeah. You, you talk to a lot of people from other countries. I noticed you've done some uh... – Live some streams of you talking to people in Russia, Brazil, talking about martial arts. If you're interested in martial arts or even he, um, Vince does a lot about um, history in Asia, visit his YouTube channel. It's called The Wandering Warrior. And uh, he takes you through some very interesting physical practices too. And um, look, help us share this video and um, we'll see you again. Vincent, you take care. Bao Zhong. Thank you. Thank you for joining us here at Four Seas, One Family.